It's important for patients to feel like they have the information that they need following surgery. Over the years, uh, the nurses have received questions from patients and patients give us feedback on the patient satisfaction surveys to let us know um, what questions that they've had following surgery. Chapel Hill Tubal Reversal Center is the only facility in the country that's limited solely to performing tubal reversal surgery. Um, our patients come from all over the world uh, to see Dr. Berger and Dr. Monteith to have their tubes untied. Dr. Berger's been performing tubal reversal surgery for more than 30 years. Dr. Monteith has been a reproductive surgeon um, and an OBGYN for more than seven years uh, and became certified as a tubal reversal surgeon working with Dr. Berger in 2008. Generally, a patient will find that they'll pass gas within a couple of hours uh, of the time they return to the hotel following surgery. However, if that isn't happening, uh, things like walking, chewing gum, drinking a lot of fluids will help to speed up that process. We do ask for patients not to resume eating solid food until they've passed gas following surgery. They need to stay on clear liquids until that time. Uh, we won't release patients to return home if they haven't passed gas or um, don't have active bowel sounds when the nurse makes hotel rounds. We do want them to remain in town until that happens. Following tubal reversal surgery, most patients won't have uh, any sort of vaginal spotting. If a tubo uterine implantation uh, has been performed, and that's where a segment of the tube is actually implanted into the muscle of the uterus, there might be spotting following surgery. Uh, also, if a laparoscopy has been performed, there's a chance that there could be some spotting following surgery. Most of the patients who have tubal reversal surgery at Chapel Hill Tubal Reversal Center on a scale of 0 to 10, with 0 being no pain, 10 the worst pain that one can imagine, uh, the pain level will be around 2 to 2.5. Two uh, if a patient is still experiencing significant uh, discomfort following surgery, we're going to ask for them to see their local doctor since that really is not normally what we see. Um, each patient is given uh, pain medications to take by mouth when they return to the hotel. While the incision's healing, uh, it's not unusual for it to have a pink um, or red appearance as it heals. But if you're experiencing um, a temperature of 100.4 or greater on two occasions or more, we want to know about that. If there's any drainage from the incision, a foul odor from the incision, or in general, if you have a concern, um, we'd like for you to give us a call and let us know, and, and we may have you see your local doctor. Before surgery, we ask patients to um, refrain from using aspirin or aspirin products, uh, but after surgery, it is fine to use ibuprofen or leave rather than Tylenol. It's fine to use uh, ointments such as Neosporin on the incision following surgery, but it's really not needed uh, unless there's a problem and the doctor has asked for you to use it. Um, it. It won't hurt anything, but the incision probably heals better if it's kept clean and dry. Um, occasionally, um, and this can be because a patient is a little overweight or has had, uh, has had previous C-sections, Sometimes there's a little overlap uh, on the abdomen uh, and it's a, a good idea to, to lift that up and make sure that the incision stays clean and dry, uh, even putting a, a blow dryer on it, not close to the skin, but just making sure that the, the incision has an opportunity to be exposed to the light and, to, uh, and keeping it clean and dry is the best way to promote healing. Frequently patients, a lot of patients like to use products such as an ovulation predictor kit to determine if they're ovulating after surgery. Um, generally speaking, you use those based on your cycle length uh, and we do have brochures that we can provide with that information. 
but as a general rule of thumb, if you haven't noted an LH surge by cycle day 15, you should uh, see your local doctor. Some cramping and spotting in early pregnancy uh, doesn't necessarily indicate there's a problem, but any concern should be followed up with your local OBGYN doctor uh, to let him or her make that determination. A lot of women um, call our office or send an email concerned that their period uh, is, they've started bleeding uh, a, a couple of days to a week earlier than they were expecting their period or their period's a little bit late the first cycle following surgery. That's um, a very common question that we hear and not unusual to see that happen. Typically the period, will the cycles will return to normal within a couple of months. Uh, but since tubal reversal surgery has been performed, if you're more than a day or two late for your period, regardless of the month, you need to take a home pregnancy test to make sure that uh, it's not in fact because you're pregnant.